Thanks for joining us again on the newsroom. The House of Representatives has asked Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Senator Gotola Kabu, to publish within 48 hours members of the 9th National Assembly who got contracts from the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC. Rep Speaker Femi Gajabiamila gave the order while ruling on the matter of privileges brought by Minority Leader Undudi Elumeli. He charged Akabio to name the lawmakers, their companies, the contracts they got, or face the wrath of the law. Gajabi Amila stressed that the minister owes it a duty to himself, the House Committee on Niger Delta, the people of Niger Delta, and Nigerians to publish the names of lawmakers who got the contracts from the NDDC. Meanwhile, Acting Managing Director of the Niger Delta Development Commission, Keme Bradikuma Ponde, has left the hospital. Ponde had slumped on Monday as House of Representatives Committee on the NDDC grilled him. In a statement, the NDDC said their acting MD collapsed at the National Assembly because he ignored his doctor's advice on his health status. Ponde was said to have left the hospital on Tuesday morning. At least 11 people have been reported killed by gunmen in another attack in Goragon village of Zango Kataf local government area of Kaduna State. The latest attack comes barely 24 hours after 21 people were killed by bandits at Kukumdaji village in neighboring Kura local government area. Police authorities are yet to confirm the latest attack, but the chairman of Zango Kataf local government area, Ezekiel Manza, said the attack happened on Monday night. The attack was carried out by gunmen suspected to be members of a Fulani militia. Manza said 11 bodies have been recovered while several others are still missing. Gunmen have reportedly kidnapped a priest of Catholic Diocese of Unsuka in Enugu State, Reverend Father Inosetumba. The priest was kidnapped on Friday afternoon while returning to his parish in Eha Amufu, Isiozo, local government area of the state. Communications Director of Unsuka Diocese, Reverend Father Matthew Eze, confirmed the kidnap, but the Enugu State Police Public Relations Officer, ASP Daniel Undukwe, is yet to confirm it. And talking politics, Governor Rotimi Akiridulu has emerged winner of the Ondo State All Progressives Congress Global Primary, which took place on Monday. Chairman of the election, Governor Yaya Belu uh, of Kogi State, announced the result after voting, sorting, and counting the votes. Akira Dulu polled 2,458 votes to defeat other nine aspirants in the election. In his acceptance speech, Governor Akira Dulu thanked the chairman and the committee members for conducting the election in a free and fair manner. The Ondo State election is scheduled for October 10, 2020. Meanwhile, President Muhammad Buhari is currently meeting with former President Goodluck Ibele Jonathan at the presidential villa in Abuja. Jonathan arrived at Asarok at about 11 a.m. and proceeded straight to President Buhari's office. The meeting's been held behind closed doors and the agenda has not been made public, but it was gathered that the former president is expected to brief Buhari on the efforts of his committee in mediating the crisis in Mali. Recall that the economy community of West African state ECOWAS had recently appointed Goodluck Jonathan to head the political reconciliation in Mali, where there's currently a leadership tussle. Let's take a break here and we'll be right back. Do stay with us. Now believe this for nothing. He no fit touch black man. If you like, gather the whole Niger, come together, make a cup. <laughs> Nothing. Which one you want? Give me V and D. Uh -huh. I mean, get small pieces. How much you want to give up? Give me 200. <coughs> Take your change now. Ruby. You know what your change is? My people, this coronavirus, now serious matter, no, now wash your hands regularly. Come use alcohol-based hand sanitizer. If you not see water, wash your hand, oh, make you not sit down for house. You see this virus, so it no get leg. Now we the waka kuru kere. No waka around, make the virus for die. No forget, say, the betterment of our people. 
partner for your handy bit. This message is from the Akin Fadei Foundation in partnership with the National Orientation Agency with support from MacArthur Foundation. Almost four months after the first COVID-19 related death was recorded in Nigeria, more than 800 people have now died across the country. With 12 new fatalities, a total of 801 persons have died of COVID-19 complications in 35 states and the Federal Capital Territory. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control and CDC also announced 562 new infections in 20 states and the FCT in its update for Monday. A total of 228 people were also discharged on Monday and 37,225 persons are confirmed to have contracted COVID-19. About 60 defaulters of the Federal Government Advisory on the compulsory use of face masks have been arrested. The Equity State COVID-19 Tax Force says it arrested the offenders and charged them to a special court where they were convicted of contravening the state COVID-19 regulations. Chairman of the state COVID-19 Tax Force, Bolaji Aluku, expressed concern over the refusal of some citizens to wear face masks. He added that the enforcement would be a regular exercise. The Akita State Government had announced the compulsory use of face masks on Monday to curb the spread of COVID-19. In Akiti, a total of 88 cases of COVID-19 have been confirmed with 48 recoveries and two deaths. And in the north, Nuhugura, a member of the Kaduna State House of Assembly representing Kagaku constituency has tested positive for COVID-19. The lawmaker who disclosed his COVID-19 status on Tuesday in a statement said he had been moved to an isolation center in Kaduna. He said the, he invited officials of the uh, Nigeria Center for Disease Control to his house to take his sample and that of members of his family last Friday. According to him, while members of his family and aides tested negative, his results returned positive. European Union leaders have agreed to a uh, rescue plan for economies left shattered by the COVID-19 pandemic. The deal is worth 750 billion euros. Charles Michael, EU Council Chief, dubbed the summit that took place for four, four days and four nights as a marathon that ended in success for all people and 27 member states. The package will see tens of uh, billions of euros to countries hardest hit by the virus, most notably Spain and Italy. Let's now take a break here to return with updates in business. Please stay with us. found your wallet in front of a supermarket. Meet me at Apple Junction. Yes, I'll be waiting for you. Now we find out. <laughs> Two of us. <laughs> Thank you very much, officer. You know, it's surprising that men like you still exist in the police force. Yes, oh, yes. This is just a token <laughs> of my appreciation. Oh, no. You don't need to do this. We are only doing our job. <laughs> Thank you very much. God You're bless welcome. you. Now I know 
police is really my friend. Yes. Spades. Spades. You know your problem. You are greedy. I'm a policeman who is doing his job. All forms of corruption in the force. Not in my country. Corruption not in my country. Oil prices rose on Tuesday, helped by positive news about vaccine trials and the European Union stimulus deal reaching levels last seen when an oil price war erupted in early March between Russia and Saudi Arabia. Benchmark Brent crude was up 1.17 cents at $44.45 a barrel. And that's on track for its biggest daily rise since mid-June at around 2.7%. While U.S. crude gained 19 cents to $41.00 a barrel, its highest daily rise in a month at around 2.6%. The prices were buoyed by an agreement among European leaders on a 750 billion euro or $859 billion fund to pop up their COVID-19 throttled economies, boosting prospects for fuel demand. In other markets, world shares and the euro also hit their strongest levels since March on Tuesday. Zambian President Edgar Lungu has asked Chinese President Xi Jinping for debt relief. He made the request in a telephone call between the two leaders on Tuesday. According to a statement from President Lungu's office, uh, he cited the country's reduced revenues due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The statement revealed that Lungu called for a debt relief and cancellation in light of reduced revenue due to the negative impact of the pandemic as well as competing needs for the country to secure adequate resources to fight the pandemic and stimulate the economy. The leaders also agreed to enhance cooperation between the two countries. Eric Deere has extended his contract at Tottenham and the new deal will see him remain at the club until 2024. The club announced the contract extension on their official website on Tuesday. The midfielder's previous deal was due to expire next summer but sports have officially tied him down to fresh terms. Since he joined the club from Sporting City back in 2014, Jay has racked up 239 senior appearances for the Lily Whites, scoring 11 goals. And that's it at this time on the newsroom. I am Aneta Felix. Many thanks for watching.